da 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 Oh! Wow! These potatoes have been down here for a while. Part of the cool little experiment we did a few weeks ago. But, um, I'd say we're done with those. Welcome to Grow Like Delights! Is that too much? The show where we're opening up and testing and showing you all kinds of different grow lights. Now, this is a new series that we're launching here on the channel. The reason why I'm doing this is because I want to be able to get a little bit more in depth with some of these unboxing videos that we have of the grow lights and then develop an overall series for you all to enjoy. So when you see it, coming across, scooting across your subscription feed, which I hope you do. I hope you see me on your subscription feed. When you see me, you can know, hey, there's another Grow Light Delights video. I'm gonna watch it. Yeah, exactly, you're gonna watch it. You know what, you're in for a treat here because we're gonna have back-to-back -back episodes. Right after I release this episode, Probably in the next day, we're going to have a second one on a second Grow Light unboxing because we've got a lot of management to take care of down here in the Grow Light area. We have fallen a little bit behind and we need to uh, get a good handle on things because I tell you what, the grip is just not sticking these days with what we've got growing. I'm kind of focusing on a couple of different things here in the grow area downstairs. So I've realized that I have too many house plants to take care of. So instead of having many house plants that I kind of like, I'm going to have a few house plants that I really like. And then we're also going to be growing different cut flower propagations, rhizomes, stuff like that. So think of your tulip bulbs your gladiola bulbs, your dahlias, any kind of thing that has a tuber, any sort of flower that I can propagate and grow downstairs, and as well as a couple of different food crops down here, we're gonna start doing that. So we're gonna get rid of some of our house plants and expand it into different areas. So you're not always looking at the same thing down here. And I also can have a lot more fun down in the basement experimenting because that's what I do. That's what I love to do is experiment with plants and show you all that it's easy to build your passion for growing plants. Whether it be indoors or outdoors, there's always something we can be doing. So let's get to our first light here, episode number one of Grow Light Delights. I promise I won't do that anymore. We've got the Grow Planner 150 watt LED. Now this is from a company called Highlight. They reached out to me to send me this grow light to see, hey, Ripley, can you open up this grow light for us and see how it works? So that's exactly what I'm gonna do today. I can tell you right away, it feels nice and heavy. So I'm gonna assume that I'm gonna open up this box right here and I'm gonna have a pretty well manufactured light. Now Highlight, um, they manufacture their lights in America. Obviously a lot of the chips and everything are produced in China. I don't think you can get away with that these days. So um, at least they manufacture them here in the US. They have a plant where everything is put together. So at least that helps out a little bit. Um, opening up. We will go through this in a second. This is the manual, but first things first, we got to dig inside to see what kind of a beauty we've got here. Oh yeah, and a beauty she is. First off, you've got the light itself, LED board, very heavy. Um, must be made out of some pretty thick aluminum. We've got a dimmer on this side here. The driver itself has got a nice little input here and then an output on this side. It says, please tear off the protective film before use. Ooh, this is the best part. Ready for this? Huh. Uh, oh, there. Oh. 
There we go. It looks like we've got four different types of diodes in here. We've got three fives, and then we have an R, and then an IR. So this is going to give us our full spectrum of light that we're looking for. Um, as we go through the manual next, we're going to talk talk about the specifics of grow lights and the important parameters that you need to be looking at when picking out and choosing a grow light. You know, this is really cool because these all can lock together here. So you can create a whole panel of grow lights if you would like to. Um, in the case, nice heavy duty cord. You need that to plug into the wall. And then we have the whole rigging system to suspend the lights above your plants, including the clips, the carabiners, and adjusting height rope thingamabobbers. All right, let's get to this manual and show you what this light is packing underneath the hood. Really quick, before we move on, I'll talk about the parameters and then hopefully, you know, I haven't even looked in this yet, but hopefully everything checks out. When looking at a grow light, you've got uh, PAR, P-A-R, you've got PPF, you've got PPFD, and then you've got PPE. Number one, we're going to talk about PAR. That is photosynthetically active radiation. Basically, this is the wavelengths or the, the bands of light, though ev everything around us is in waves and frequencies, believe it or not. As an electrician, I, trust me, I know all about those things. So wavelengths, this is uh, essentially a band of light that is going to be uh, readily available for your plant uh, to use. Uh, we'll say lumens are for humans, but PAR is for par, par, plant par, parents. Plant. Forget me not putting a parallel to that, but lumens are for humans because that's how much light we can see, how bright the light is. But if you look at lumens on the plant light, uh, it doesn't matter how bright it is to us. But if we've got a light that is really bright, you know, obviously it's still going to have some conjective cohesion together with its par ratio. Uh, but par, this is the amount of photosynthetically active radiation light bands that are available for your light. PAR is measured in nanometers. So if you see a light that's listed at 400 to 700 nanometers, that's what that is right here, NM. Uh, next is going to be PPF. This is called photosynthetic photon flux. And I would not be lying to you if I didn't say that I didn't just Google this to see what it was. PPF is measured in micromoles per second and this is measuring the amount of PAR that is getting to your plant. So if you imagine uh, some raindrops being PAR. Now if we can imagine a bunch of raindrops in a small area, this is PPF. See how simple that is? Simple. I'm glad we agree. Now we look at the next thing, which is photosynthetic photon flux density. So this is not only how many raindrops are falling in an area, but how fast those raindrops are falling, how big those raindrops are falling, how dense those raindrops are, all of the above, this PPFD measurement has got to be, in my opinion, my humble opinion, the most important thing when it comes to your plant's ability, your, your, your light's ability to grow your plants. So we could have a great PAR, we could have a great PPF, but if our PPFD, the density of everything else we just went through, is not adequate to grow our plants, they're not going to do well. So PPFD ultimately is the most important thing that you should be looking at 
when choosing a grow light. Here's the tricky part though. We don't just want to look at PPFD in one little spot. We want to look at PPFD throughout the entire sphere of what we're growing underneath, you know, the canopy of plants beneath our light. So, as I said earlier, I have not looked at this manual yet, but I sure hope it's got PPFD in it, and even better yet, if it's got a PPFD map. So let's dive in and find out. Also, we have photosynthetic photon efficacy. This is just about, you know, how efficient your LED diodes Overall, what this is going to tell you above all else is just going to be how high of quality this product is, how high of quality the manufacturing is. Are they skipping out on you? Are they taking a little bit of a cheap cut by getting those cheaper LED diodes or not? That's what the PPE is going to tell you. All right, diving into here. All right, spectrum, full spectrum, blah, 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 blah. Over 60,000 hours of life out of this bad boy. Dimmable, it's got a 36-month warranty. Okay, I found what the RJ14 cable is for. Um, basically, that you could dim all of your lights with one main master controller so if you dim the first one and have all of your other lights connected they will also be dimmed together so that's a pretty cool feature that i have not seen in other grow lights in the past now the moment of truth what this manual says for all of the other things that we just listed ppf says 412 micromoles per second the efficacy is 2.7 five micromoles per joule so that is pretty efficient that is a decent light um it does not say anything about ppfd though so that's something that i have to find uh without it out okay let's head to the internet to find ppfd Hello internet, we are looking for PPFD on the Grow Planner 150 watt grow light. I really wish it worked that way. I don't know why it doesn't yet. I mean, in all the different advancements of technology that we have, just come on. All right, here we go. Oh, okay, with a little bit of searching here on their website, Hi Grow Planner. Um, we found some PPFD maps. This is going to show us exactly how much PPF we have in different areas of the grow light. Okay, after digging on the internet for a little bit, I found the PPFD maps. Um, at 12 inches, the center of this PPFD is 1595. And now out on the sides, we hit anywhere from 460 to 979. Then at our highest distance, which is 18 inches, we have a PPFD of 481 at the low on the outsides, up to 737 smack dab right in the center of this grow light. And then the outside of the perimeter, which is 2, it says 2.8 zero i don't know if that's two feet or two inches i'm assuming that's going to be two feet but some ease some a little bit more detail in your ppfd map would be good on that front so add in you know a foot over there you know or is that talking about meters i don't know because it doesn't tell me it's just a simple unit of measurement zero zero point five one one point five and two but does not tell me if that is in feet, if that is in inches, if that's in centimeters, doesn't tell me. So when we're looking at this kind of stuff as a customer, that is going to be important. So um, I'm gonna be sure to give my feedback in all places possible with this LED grow light. Now, uh, talking about the PPE, the reason why a lot of times people will say LED grow lights are junk and they'll never grow a plant is because some high density uh, flo sodium fluoride grow lights will grow at an efficacy of basically like 0.9 to 
to 1.1, 1.2. So almost double the efficacy. So you're gonna be getting a ton of light out of one of those. But for a guy like me that's just growing these plants down here, I grow some vegetables here and there, we'll be growing some flowers. I don't need a light like that. I don't need to be pulling a thousand watts. I can't afford to be pulling a thousand watts. There, I'm gonna have more return growing these, um, even though it's gonna cost a little bit more up front to have a bunch of these compared to an HPS bulb. It's gonna save me in the long run with how much I have to replace these lights. And then the energy cost is also still gonna be lower compared to how much light we're putting out in the long run. So assuming that all of these maps right here are correct and legitimate, I would say we're good to go. Usually you want about 600 PPFD for seedlings. The amount of PPFD that we're looking for for our plants is going to be about 400 for seedlings, maybe about 600 for some vegetative growth, you know, your house plants and stuff like that. And then if we're trying to get flowering plants, these real serious growers, you're really looking at about 900 to 1100 for your PPFD benchmarks at that point. So all looks fine and dandy with this nice light. I do really like the construction of it. It's got some extremely sturdy construction on this bad boy. I feel like I could drop this thing 10 feet and it would be okay. We all know, of course, what happens next is I plug this thing in and Hopefully I don't shock myself. All right, I'm gonna test it. Make sure it's on first, just to be sure that it's not the light that's faulty. She's good. <laughs> She's got 120 volts right there. I know 120 volts when I when I when I taste it. I tell you that much. Holy gamole! Whoa! Oh man. Roll out the lights, yeah, sitting in the breeze, getting my suntan on. Dude, that's kind of refreshing, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Is that bright? Yeah. Certainly bright. Hopefully the numbers don't lie. So, of course, we will be having this growing plants downstairs in the basement. So as we make videos, we will be giving you all updates on how this grow light goes and how it grows, along with the one that we're about to have in our next episode, and that is a Spider Farmer SF600. Very excited for this light as well. So thank you all so much for tuning in to the very first episode, the grand opening, if you will, of Grow... Grow light delights. <laughs> couldn't get that out, quite out of my mouth there. Um, if you couldn't tell, I'm gonna try and make these grow light videos a little bit entertaining. So uh, if y'all are new to the channel, I implore you to check out some of our other videos. We grow plants indoors and outdoors. We grow small plants. We grow big plants. We grow plants that produce flowers. We got plants that produce nothing but roots, all kinds of stuff here in the garden. I hope you all enjoyed today's video. If you have not yet subscribed, please do so down below. It's that little red button. It says subscribe on it right, right down on this side. Uh, click that, hit the bell button so you're notified of every time we come out with a new video. And of course, I encourage you to get active in the comment section down below. Give us some discussion to talk about these grow lights, my plants behind me, the weird faces that I make, the crazy thing that you ate for breakfast this morning, whatever it might be. Just leave a comment down below. I'd really appreciate it. Happy gardening, and we'll see you in the next episode.